Hi all, this is Aditya and welcome back to the Floating School. In the previous session, we discussed this particular question, how do experts forecast economic growth? Based on what parameters do they assume that a country will grow at a faster or at a slower pace? Today, I would like to take the discussion further. I would be doing a trend analysis. I would be analyzing India's ICOR since 1950s. In case if you missed the first session, please watch the first session, please watch it in order to get a better understanding of this topic. But for now, let's move on. So as I said, I would be analyzing India's ICOR. For those of you who for some reason don't want to watch the first session, I would try to quickly explain what is COR and what is ICOR. First, let me explain COR quickly. COR stands for Capital Output Ratio. Capital Output Ratio means Capital by Output. So Capital by Output Ratio tells us how much of capital a country is putting in to get one unit of output. Suppose I am doing a business and I am inputting 4 units to get 1 unit of output. My friend is also doing the same business but he is putting in only 3 units of capital to get 1 unit of output. So my COR is 4 is to 1, his COR is 3 is to 1 which means he is more efficient. He is putting in only 3 units to get 1 unit of output. So the lesser the COR the better it is. Let us come to ICOR. ICOR stands for Incremental Capital Output Ratio. It's very simple. ICOR means how much of additional capital is required to produce one additional unit of output. So even for ICOR, the lesser the ICOR, the better it is. I hope it is clear now. So I was explaining, I, I, I wanted to do a trend analysis. I explained this in the previous session. Let us quickly look at it once again. In 1950s, India's ICOR was 2.7, which means that we were very efficient. We were taking in only 2.7 units of additional capital to produce one unit of additional output. But then gradually it jumped to 6.7. Our ICOR from 1950s to 1980, it increased to 6.7, which means we became less efficient. And again, by 2007, it came down to 4. So the question is, why did this happen from 2.7 to 6.7, from 6.7 back to 4? Why did this happen? So let us do the analysis. So before I start, let me give you a couple of facts. If a country uses more and more of machines, which means if a country's production is capital intensive, its ICOR would be high as the capital intensity is high. What is ICOR? Additional capital by additional output. So if you are putting in lot of capital, your ICOR would go up because the capital intensity is high. But for other countries where the production is labor intensive, the country operates with more labor, its ICOR would tend to be lower. So this trend of low, high and low is common for almost all the developing economies. But why does this happens? Let us look into the details. First question, why was India's ICOR low during 1950s? I said that in 1950s, India's ICOR was 2.7. So the question is, why was it low? During 1950s, India was a labor intensive economy. India was an agrarian economy. Agrarian economy means the economy where the contribution of agriculture towards the GDP is more than 50%. More than 50% of the GDP comes from the agriculture sector. So by 1950s, India was still an agrarian economy and agriculture by nature is a labor intensive sector. Uh, well, this fact is a bit questionable because in various developed countries even agriculture has become capital intensive. So let me state it in a different way. India's agriculture sector by 90, in, in 1950s was more of labor intensive. Hence our ICOR was low. We were putting in more of labor, less of capital. Hence our ICOR was low. But the question is why did it increase by 1980s? How did it jump from 2.7 to 6.7? 
since 1960s india started investing heavily in infrastructure projects such as road bridges dams canals and industrial plants what are the problem with these two project uh, these two investments infrastructure projects tend to have long gestation periods imagine the government is constructing national highway that to 1960s when we did not have modern sophisticated equipments we did not have big cranes at least in india so what happened the government was constructing national highways in 1960s the gestation period was sometimes 5 years 10 years so for 10 straight years the government kept on pumping in capital but the output was zero the toll tax will come only after the highway has been completed and the completion will take 10 years so for 10 straight years you are putting in capital the toll tax the output will come after 10 years so what will happen your icor will jump up capital is high output is nil so icor will jump up what is the problem with industrial plants industrial plants often take time to break even you can buy machinery you can invest heavily but sometimes it takes longer time to break even because if the government is producing the government will keep the profit margin very low sometimes even at a loss the government was selling certain critical items at a loss and the biggest problem with india's industrial plants india's public sector undertakings were that some of them were unviable let us see how I, I, let me give you some examples so this is the conclusion of the discussion so far why did it increase during 1980s because we started investing heavily but the output production began only after the project was completed because of this our icor jumped up let us look into the example of india's unviable ventures there was a public sector unit called scooter india limited in lucknow this case is really interesting the factory continued to pay wages to 3000 workers for 10 straight years without manufacturing a single scooter can you imagine what will happen obviously your icor will go up if a country has a number of factories such as scooter india limited obviously it will become inefficient because you are putting in so much of capital and output is zero i have even a more interesting case for you haldia state fertilizer plant there was a state fertilizer plant located at haldia let us look at the capital investment what was the capital invested by the government in this fertilizer plant thousands of well paid workers workers were getting salaries the government even went to the extent of creating small flats for workers near the factory small bungalow for managers a hospital for the employees subsidized store for the employees and all these costs were included in the capital invested of capital investment of this haldia state fertilizer plant what was the output the plant did not produce a kilo of fertilizer for years can you imagine investing so much of money and output is zero what was the reason the company was unviable if they had produced they would have lost crores of rupees because there were no takers there was no market hence it was cheaper not to produce so the factory is going on workers are coming but production is not happening all of them are getting salary but there is no output because if you produce no one would be there to buy so it is cheaper not to produce can you imagine so what is the crux of the discussion whenever any economy kick starts the development process the capital investment increases faster and the production follows this pushes up the icor during 1950s we were a agrarian economy then we realized that we should invest in capital we should in uh, we should invest in infrastructure we should invest in steel plants power plants but these infrastructure projects tend to have higher gestation period some of the plants i should say most of the plants were unviable because of that we pumped in so much of money but output was zero hence our icor increased but once the projects are completed and the production starts the icor tends to fall because at some point of time you will break even you will start producing it might take 10 years or 15 years but then when that happens 
ICR will fall drastically. Another big reason for the fall of ICR in the long term is increase in the efficiency. So I hope it is clear. Let me give you a quick bite. You know the factors that could push up the country's ICR. Can you give me four factors which could push a country's ICOR, which could make a country less efficient? Let me give you two non-economic factors and two economic factors. Legal suits and environmental clearances. Suppose the government uh, auctions coal blocks at a cheaper rate, at a very cheap rate at, at throwaway prices and the government expects that the entrepreneurs who bought the coal mines will produce electricity at a cheaper rate and because of that the economy will grow. But then what happens? Someone files a PIL in the Supreme Court saying that the allocation was not transparent, there was some corrupt activities involved in the uh, auction. So the Supreme Court says okay fine, no one will mine a single kilo of coal till the court passes its judgment. And suppose the court takes 5 or 10 years, what will happen? Till 10 years production is nil, zero. Capital by output, capital is so high, output is almost zero. What will happen? Your ICR will go up, we will become less efficient. Another example is environmental clearances. Suppose you invested heavily in some plants, you set up a steel plant or you set up a huge uh, power plant, you started production then suddenly someone filed a PIL in a court saying that this plant is destroying the ecology of the environment. So the court will say okay fine stop the production, stop the plant, as long as I do not pass a judgment you will not do the production. So what will happen? You invested heavily in your power plant or steel plant and the court said because of these environmental issues stop the production. What will happen? Capital is so high, output is almost nil, the ICR will jump up. I won't comment on the morality of these acts because I believe Supreme Court is well within its rights to question the policy of the government if the court feels that yes there was some immoral activities involved the court definitely has the right to stop the production but I am saying ultimately factually at the end of the day it makes us inefficient it pushes the country down and it slows our growth process. Let me give you two economic factors. Erratic supply of critical inputs such as coal and power. Suppose you set up a power plant or you set up a steel plant. Suddenly because of these court cases you cannot mine the coal. The government had allocated you some coal blocks and said that you take you mine coal from these blocks use it to generate electri electricity and uh, sell it at a cheaper rate. But because of these court cases, your raw material itself is short in supply. What will happen? Your output will come down. So you invested so much in the power plant, but because of lack of critical inputs, your output has fallen down and hence your ICR goes up and the country as a whole suffers. And other issues are issues related to land acquisition. Suppose the government has a huge plan. The government wants to set up a tech city, a smart city and the government wants to uh, invite producers from all over the world. The government made the decision, okay, we'll be setting up 100 factories, but then the government realized that land acquisition is a big issue. The government acquired some land and all of them went to Supreme Court and filed a case that we were forcefully asked to sign the papers because of various reasons and the government say, and the Supreme Court says, stop the project. As long as I deliver my judgment, you should not continue with the project. So because of these reasons, the ICOR tends to jump up and we become less efficient. So this is the crux of the discussion that we have done so far. How can we grow faster? Increase the investment. One solution is increase the investment. In a way, I'm saying increase the capital formation or become more efficient, increase the efficiency, 
bring down your icor this makes us more efficient and we can grow at a faster rate now this question is really important as i discussed in the beginning of the first session that arvind subramaniam the chief economic advisor to the government of india said that india is poised to grow at 8% per annum by 2017 so we know for sure not only arvind subramaniam even international monetary fund imf has said that india will be growing by 8% it is often said that india is an oasis of growth in the third world desert that's a really good comment that's a beautiful statement so we are sure that india would be growing by 8% within the next two years but my question is how can we sustain the high economic growth achieving a high economic growth i won't say is easy but comparatively easier but sustaining it is really difficult we achieved high growth rate even prior to 2009 we were growing at a very handsome rate but then it came down so we don't want that thing to happen again we want to grow at this higher rate for a long period of time we want to sustain this economic growth how can we do that how can we do that sustained high economic growth requires macroeconomic stability which has three dimensions i am saying if india wants to sustain this high economic growth we need to achieve macroeconomic stability what is macroeconomic stability macroeconomic stability has three dimensions what are those three dimensions if you want to know those three dimensions you'll have to watch the third session i don't want to bombard you with too many facts in the in single session so please watch the third session if you are watching it on youtube it will be somewhere here but i would still request you to visit my website www.thefloatingschool.com please visit my website if you have any questions put it in the comment section below if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it thumbs down and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much